avoid. And Both go. ways in the top there. Way lower high rise. This is just before the, the high rise boom. This is about 64, 65, I believe. Interesting. Yeah, it's got to be late 50s, right? I stand corrected. Transportation to San Francisco was by ferry, a convivial mode of travel that, particularly in the evening, had elements of fantasy and generated a sense of adventure that even the meek could enjoy. Many a commuter dreamed secret dreams when the blown spray wet his cheeks and his soul soared to the undulation of these crimes to the so Bay Area. Like I know. <laughs> That's interesting. Whoa. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's that S curve. <laughs> This is a two short excerpts the from The huge steel film. towers rose like magic. After years of planning, the visions and blueprints of the engineers took physical shape under the skilled hands of the men of action. The bridge men, long experienced in this hazardous business, went about their work, sometimes in precarious positions, expertly guiding the steel into place. Some sections weighed as much as 79 tons. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All the were at American Bridge Company's plants at Gary, Indiana, and Ambridge, Pennsylvania. Whoops, he's stuck. Tower, 500 feet above the water, bridgemen adjust and secure the wire rope. To provide a firm, safe footing for the bridgemen, a special type of catwalk was designed. USS Cyclone chain link fence was chosen for its light weight, low wind resistance, and great strength. This bundle of cyclone fence will cover a distance of 100 feet. When sufficient flooring had been placed to reach the next tower, it was stretched into position. This job calls for iron nerves for the bridgemen ride the catwalk during the stretching operation. <laughs> but after the precarious footing during tower erection, this 10-foot catwalk was the same. Hello, OSHA? I believe that one. Fun, but with a serious purpose. To keep the wire mesh sliding freely as it is stretched over the steel rope. <laughs> San Francisco Bay looked like this from the catwalk. Far below, the old ferry boat plows solidly along. Soon to be replaced by trains of electric cars, automobiles and trucks, rolling in an endless stream across the bridge that soars above. At dinner time, the bridgemen lose no time hitting for home. A run along the catwalk to whet the appetite, then the sky ride, and down the escalator, helter skelter. Remember that Unical Tower? I am. Bring it back. <laughs> I don't know if any of you saw the Nixon campaign ad on the side of the building a minute ago. <laughs> Eastbound tolls. <laughs> I guess I'm, my 
Christ still in. This is about 1937, 38. We want to go in the carpool lane. Don't do it. <laughs> that's the dog footage. Yeah, that's the dog perspective. There you go. Talking dog, go ahead. There are quite a number of these sort of triumphal movies after the bridge is open. They, they, uh, everybody shot their trip across the bridge. Not many cars, it was expensive. The bridge was built with a second level to accommodate the most modern interurban trains in operation anywhere, controlled at each end of the bridge by a tower that houses the switches, relays, and circuit that make up the nerve centers of one of the most efficient train control systems in existence, with safety devices that are the product of the most modern engineering genius. Inside the cab, the motorman controls the speed of his train in response to the panel, which indicates 35 miles an hour at this point. This indicator is part of an elaborate safety system worked by means of electrical impulses carried through the rail. If the motorman were to disregard the speed indicated on the panel, control of the train would be automatically taken away from him. There has never been a train collision on the bridge since they began to use it in 1939. This film was made in 1945. The bell indicates a change of speed. Watch closely and you'll see the indicator drop to 25 miles an hour. If he gets too close to the preceding train, he is automatically stopped. And that's nice to know in a fog, uh, which sometimes creeps in on the San Francisco side. Approaching the terminal, where the air is fragrant with a smell of spice and roasting coffee, the speed drops from 17 to 11 miles an hour. 